upfront on the voice of America. My name is Jackson Bungani. So I'm I'm so proud today to welcome my homeboy uh, Nelly Sugu from Rwanda. Nelly, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Jackson? Welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, Nelly is um is part of a growing uh, industry, the 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 gaming industry in Africa. Uh, telephone uh, proliferation over the last ten years has reached over eighty percent, and um. We, we part of what we're seeing growing out of that is uh, mobile gaming and all these types of uh, applications and Nelly uh, is in the studio with us they came all the way from Boston so happy to have you in the studio today uh, Nelly thank you Jackson um, so Nelly tell us about the, the applications that you're working on right now alright so the first one is a gaming application like you said it's called Amaturufu and the whole idea came back from you know me growing up and after growing up in Rwanda, at 18 years old, mm -hmm. I came to America to study. And in the midst of that, I just got hit by some culture shock where I had to just immerse myself in this home American culture. Mm -hmm. And within that, I started feeling homesick after a couple of years. And I was doing electrical and computer engineering with the interest in software. And it just started daunting on me the fact that, you know, in Africa... You know, the pride of Africans, like, you know, when we would get up together, like, uh, with other friends, we would just play Amaturufu as a group. Amaturufu, that's a, a, a quintessentially Rwandan yeah. card game. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, you used to play it with uh, your friends? Yep, yep. How did you learn how to play it? Did your parents teach you? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, uh, so we, we would play it in terms, you know, like, as a way of, you know, killing time. Actually, our parents didn't like us playing it. So how how playing. different is it from uh, the regular card games? Oh, it's, oh man, it's, it has like a bunch of rules that came from Portugal, the history of it, and then they have suits from France, and it's kind of like... Wait, so Amaturufu is not a Rwandan game? Actually, I just found out. <laughs> so I, w I was at the National Museum, I mean the American Museum of Natural History, mm -hmm. where I learned that Amaturufu started, you know, has origins in Portugal with the colonization. Right. So we took... This Portugal. is something that was brought into the continent. Right, right, right. Okay. So, like, the whole trade that was going on in East Africa. Right, right. And that's why you find Amaturufu is quite similar to Amatatu in Uganda. Ah, Amatatu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, so. Amatatu, yes, yes, yeah. yes. We used to play that when I was growing up. Yeah. Okay. And, um, so you grew, you grew up playing Amaturufu. Yes. Um, car, I mean, high school. When I mean, you, when, when you, growing up, since I was yeah. like six. So you, you, you get here in college uh -huh. and you, f you feel homesick mm -hmm. and the one thing that really you felt that uh, could connect you, mm -hmm. uh, to your homeland right. is this card game that I, you grew up with. Yeah, I mean, like, I went to Among college. Among many things. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I, I went to college with, like, another cohort of Rwanda students. So mm -hmm. we were on campus. And if when other kids had gone home for, like, you know, summer holidays, mm -hmm. we were still Perfect on campus. Agent, right. So it was just, like, a big community of Rwandans. And we had, like, actually, like, competition going on. Like, 20 Over, over my yeah, yeah, like, mm -hmm. you know, teams and stuff like that. So, right. And, you know, like, it was, a, it it was, it was like, an amazing thing. Right. And then from college, I moved to New Hampshire for mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. And there, I'm only just me and my friend, my best friend, Bennett. And it's literally secluded because as you grow up, you kind of tend to just, like, you know, go on your own. Mm. And I start realizing, like, man, like, you know, I miss that, you know. And the more I start thinking about software. Well, you, you, you miss the camaraderie that yeah, Amaturufu yeah, used to bring. Yeah, I mean, just, like, just, right. you know, feeling homesick, man. Yeah, like, nostalgia. Yeah, and I couldn't go home, yeah. you know. So, I, I don't know, um... I work one day, I was walking in my cubicle and I saw a friend of mine. He, you know, is a friend that I keep talking to. His name is Ryan. And he he was playing, with, you know, with a game on his phone. I'm like, dude, what is that? And he told me that it's a game that he's making, you know, replicating a game that he grew up playing. The card games? Was it a no, card game? No, it was, you know, he's, you know, he's an mm. American dude. Right, right. So he was, you know, he was making a game that he grew up playing. Right. And that's when the light came uh, on. Ah, the idea. Yeah, and, that. you know, I, it just hit me that, mm. you know, so everything that I've been seeing, you know, going through college just hit me. Like, when the, I, I started realizing that, you know, all this Call of Duty, all these, you know, games that, you know, kids grew up playing here, mm. they play because they relate to it. Mario, when you think about this Pokemon Go thing, mm. it has such an, an attachment to them because they grew up on that. And, uh, you mm. know, then I realized that this whole gaming industry, you know, the Microsoft, the, the ES Sports, mm. all these, they make games for an audience that's Western. You know, kids that grew up playing, you know, football, American football, mm. so they they play Madden, and I start, you know, like 
it just hit me that there's so many Rwandans around the world that might feel the same way I feel because you know sometimes I feel like man I wish I could play with like you know my you know high school friends but one is in France another one is in you know Germany another mm. one is in China so there is no way we could play mm. I started thinking about like how does actually one make a game mm. and put it on the phone like that was just like crazy to me and I'm like okay so hold up at the time <laughs> even when you were thinking about that uh -huh. were you already thinking about Amaturufu at all no no, not yet. Not yet. Not so, so when you saw this guy playing his childhood game, mm -hmm. the game that he, I mean, you know, coming up with mm -hmm. the idea of creating a game based on what he used to play as a kid, mm -hmm. the, it did not occur to you nope. that maybe I should also come nope. up with something that... No, nope. I mean, to me, what just started happening with, you know, all those, like, memories, like, everything just started kind of, like, you know, coming together and mm -hmm. I was just frustrated. And then... When, you know, when I was, okay, I got to figure out, like, you know, this is so cool. Like, you know, I started realizing I'm really interested in mobile development. I'm interested in knowing how to, you know, these things get on the phone. I need to figure it out. Because otherwise, you know, you know when you say tell people that I'm in IT, like, oh, yeah, can, you know, can you hack? It's like, no, I can't. <laughs> you know, okay, when you say you're into coding. <laughs> yeah, right, you're into coding. Right, like, right, can right. you make me a website? Mm -hmm. like, I don't know how to make a website. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a shame, right? So it's like, now it's like, can you make an app? It's mm -hmm. like. I actually don't know how to make it out, you right. know? So I was like, okay, I gotta, I gotta figure out how to do this stuff. And then, you know, I started learning, I started learning, and I'm like, okay, all these books reading, you know, like I start, I bought books on Amazon and stuff, you know, like, I just read it and just got boring because, you know, every knowledge, you gotta practice it. So at this point, you're just learning how to make mm -hmm. software, mm -hmm. to, to be a software developer. I'm a mobile developer. A mobile developer. Right, right. So I'm, you know, like, I'm just bored. And I'm like, okay, the only one thing that I know is, I gotta find something to apply these things to because it's just you know you just like uh, memorizing stuff okay. okay and then that's why i was like okay i need to make a game but you know i can't come up with a game so which game do i know that i can program right right and then that's when i'm a true fool exactly. was born yeah exactly because that's what i knew 100 percent. and then like i was like okay i know this game i know how it so works. you you started working on a maturu for how long did it take you to fully develop it <laughs> took me about three months three months three months that's not too long i mean you know three, I mean, three months you know taking that the good, learning or the game is that simple no, no, no I, mean, yeah. I mean i just put in a lot of work what are some of the complexities of, uh, complexities of the of, of the game the, oh so so the one thing that i had to figure out right so when you're playing a card game it's you know like you don't think about this but how did you learn it you know, because now it's about me teaching the computer mm -hmm. what I know. Uh. So it's programming, not logic. So I had to put myself in the shoes of Nelly as a kid. First time I learned it, what did I learn? Mm -hmm. So I know that, you know, this card is values 10. And, you know, start teaching the computer, all of that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. I had to build in, like, a artificial intelligence so I could play against it. That's awesome. You know, so, you know, I mean, it was it was awesome. And, you know, just figuring out that logic. That's, that's the, the learning curve itself was... I mean, it's, you know, it's crazy. Yeah. So... The, you know, the reason why it took me down, I was so into it that, you know, my goal was I'm going to make. So I remember I told my friends, I mean, it's crazy. I told my friends, like, dude, I'm going to make this game by the end of the year. It was in 2015. Mm -hmm. It was about, like, I think September. And when I talk, when I started telling people, that's when I realized I couldn't give up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like. You set yourself up. Yeah, but. That I got. A call from the American Museum of Natural History telling me that they have middle school students that they have a camp for a week and they're teaching them the anthropology of games card dice games and my tourful was one of them oh wow so I was in New York for like two days part of this you know camp teaching these kids literally and these kids loved it that's awesome so and then from that like I got like a couple people that were like dude I want a tutorial for this thing. I'm into card games, and I want to learn what this game is about. Mm. So when I was making it, I didn't even think about a tutorial because anybody that I was developing it for already knew the game. Right. So now I was like, oh, shoot. I have to work on a tutorial right now. <laughs> yeah. Have you I mean, worked I, on it? Halfway done, and I stopped. You know, just because, like, you know, I was looking at... So uh, the way I'm monetizing it, I'm putting ads in it. Uh -huh. So it's basically you bet on the fact that it's going to get played by a lot of people. It's going to get downloaded by a lot of people, and then therefore... However much time people spend on it, you're gonna get you know money the from ad, ads. ad revenue. And then right. right now it's at a point where it's just you know it's not a online game where you know you can invite me to play, and that's where the next level that I wanted to take to, where you can invite people to play. Like you can play somebody who's in Sweden right now, but 
that part of it, it's a little complicated. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have the knowledge for it. And I just, you know, calculated, literally learning it. And then the time that it was going to take me to learn it and implement it, as opposed to, the, you know, the stuff that I'm working on. So now. what is this other billion dollar idea? I'm not curious okay. to know the idea that made you right. quit the Amaturufu. Right. Put it on the, on the back burner. All right. What is it? Oh my god. Alright, so this is the ultimate game changer. Game changer <laughs> for sports. Whoa. Right now we're focusing on basketball just because, you know, that's what I know, that's what I love the most. And But you played ball? Uh, yeah, I have a basketball tattoo in my bag, man. I was captain my of my man. high school team. My man. You know, but <laughs> what happened, right? So I moved from college, you know, I moved from college to New Hampshire to go work. And literally just the African kid, just, I don't have family here, so I could go wherever to work. And then I get in New Hampshire, and it's a new reality. I don't know anyone. So, I, you know, I go to work from 9 to 5, and after 5, I go home. What do I do? Like, the only the one thing that I knew how to do was just go play by some fine friends, meet, you know, meet them on the basketball court. Mm -hmm. And it's a small city, and... You know, I Google basketball courts near me. It takes me a little bit of time to find them because they're not actually, you know, nobody searches for basketball courts in Nashville, so mm -hmm. it's not listed. So I ask people, I find a court. And I didn't have a car then, so it's about, like, 10-minute walk to the court. And after work, I put on my shorts, you know, my shorts, I get a basketball, and I run to the court to find out there is nobody. Like, it take me forever to actually meet people on the court, right? And I meet them. And, you know, I, I, I decided to register for, uh, for like, leagues to meet people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I did that. And then, like, and, you know, I'm just that one person that, you know, sees a problem and it just, you know, I never let go because it kind of frustrates me, right? And I'm like, dude, this sucks. Like, you know, I kind of, you know, take a step back and I think, like, okay, I was, like, I'm an outgoing person. I could just really make friends easy. But what if I wasn't? Like, what if I didn't take that step to go right, right. to a league? What if you were an introvert? Exactly. How, are you, how would you yeah. be able to... I, I mean, I literally, I mean that, that literally is the difference between somebody that, you know, has fun and somebody that just lonely, somebody that just, you know, drinks themselves to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just because you don't have any friends. And, you know, I started, like, going back to experiences. Like, I went to, like, a science conference when I was in college and didn't know anyone that was coming. Just showed up at a conference because I was invited made friends with surgeons just talking you know just you meet people at a conference you don't know about nothing about before you meet them mm -hmm. but just because you have a common interest you get along for that time All right so it started hitting me like in sports there's this social barrier thing where you feel like if you want to go play soccer if you want to go play basketball you kind of feel like you want you need your friends to go with you it's like a company or something mm -hmm. but with technology I think that era is done where I don't need to know you to play with you because proof is if I were to show up in DC and I see a court and I have a ball, I'm going to just go tell them I'm next. So, so let me say, this is like a dating app for people who want to play again. To I mean, together. you can call it, right? I mean, you can call it, it's literally like, you know, when people ask me like, what is it? Like, tell me in the terms that I understand. It's Uber. It's, it's Tinder. Tinder. It's, it's the Tinder of, uh, I mean, of I mean, basketball. Well, you know, but think about this, right? So it's like, literally, you break that, you know, break, you bring that down that social barrier, mm. and now you go to LA. You want to play reasons, ball. You want to play ball. Mm. You, you no longer need to be stuck in your hotel room because you don't know anyone. Mm -hmm. You can just hit up people. And you can see who's playing near you. So the app aggregates people who are in the neighborhood and who are interested in playing ball. Yes. But do not have anybody to play with. I mean, you can have... Okay, so... so if you want to play I mean, a, a game of pickup yeah, basketball, yeah, soccer... Yeah, I mean, and the crazy know. thing is, like, right now, if we're friends and, you know, I'm home, you're doing whatever, and I text you guys, like, yo, it's so beautiful outside, let's play ball t today. But you got a date. He got to go to school. And two people answer... So I only have three people. Mm. Now this app is gonna go find you the remaining people. Uh, you know what I mean? Find me. Exactly. The other yeah. what uh, seven people? Yeah, seven people to, to, to have a full, game. full, yeah. full court. Yeah. Uh. So ultimately, what I want, and then you know, and, and that's, so that's the game that you're developing right yeah. now. Yeah. I mean, it's not a game, and it it's has a, it's more potential than <sighs> it's an app that you're yeah, developing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not yeah, a game. I mean, potential-wise, it's just crazy. Um. 
what how far are you in, in okay so right now we're way past process. the early coding stage like we're we've, we've been internally testing it and come uh halloween this year so bottom in a couple I mean, months a couple, couple weeks in a couple weeks we're gonna I mean, which kind of feels like, oh my gosh, should I give it to people just yet? Because, you know, I would, I, I don't feel like I would ever feel like it's ready. Because, like, I, you know, oh, I don't, mm -hmm. right? But, what know, is the biggest challenge with that game? The biggest challenge is that algorithm. I mean, for every game, it's an yeah, algorithm. Yeah, but it's, is, it, is it finding the people themselves to, to be part of it? No. I mean, how, how does... Because I feel like it's one of those crowdsourcing for, for, for you to know that somebody is somewhere and they need to play it the game or to play sports, mm -hmm. they need to input their information, their data, yeah. right? Yeah. And, 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 you know, and that, as as long as much as you can think that it's hard, it's not because, like, people want that. People are tired of, you know, not being able to do what they love right. because somebody else is busy. And technology is solving some of these uh, problems. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Interesting. Is, is that something that you see... Uh, being of use in in Rwanda. I mean, def I mean, the only thing that the, I mean, of course, definitely, mm. the only barrier that is in Rwanda right now is data, like internet, right, because right. that thing requires you to be connected to the internet twenty four twenty four seven. Right. So I think, but you know, but I think the oh. way the continent is going with this fiber optics and stuff yeah, like that, yes, it's yes. and that's one of my, you know, that's one of my goals. Like, what platforms are you going to be rolling? Is uh, you know the app mm -hmm. and the game. So the app, you know, this, you know, the ball up is gonna be right now when we when we better test. Hold up, can we can we check out Amaturufu? Is it yeah, online yeah. right now? Can yeah. you see yeah, what you, it yeah, looks you, like? Yeah, yeah, you can in the store. All right, let me let me check it out. I feel that after did you feel do you feel like after you launch this uh, application, mm -hmm. you'll be able to start concentrating on Amaturufu and maybe even quit your other jobs where I mean, you I will mean, do. Uh, my goal is I mean I'm 26, but it, I'm I'm planning to to retire in like four 35. years. <laughs> And you know, but, but you know, that's that's good, man. I mean, I mean you know, it, yeah. I mean, it's doable. It's no, it is doable. It. But you know, but actually, I'm trying to step away from you know. After I do this ball up thing, I'm not gonna go back to my truth. Like I'm thinking, I you know, like I'm going a step further. Can I hire somebody to work on my truth? So, what's your advice to say a young developer on the continent in Africa, like man. yourself, who's curious? Right, right. They probably don't have the resources that you have. You right, living in the right, USA. Right, right. Uh, what are some of the tools that are available to them, to them in, t in terms of either the knowledge, right. uh, the platforms, right. the right. connections, the networks? Right. Right. Um, what, what, what knowledge can you drop at them right now? Man, like, I think, and, and I've been trying to figure this out crazy. Because growing up, I wasn't that kid that just was super smart. and So I, would, I just hustle, right? So... And I never stop to learn, like in any situation, even though when, you know, because like a lot of people, you know, nowadays they tell you, know what you want to do mm -hmm. and go do it. Mm -hmm. But the key word, know what you want to do, like it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I find myself just doing stuff just because I was in the mood. But so like, just find something that just makes your heart just tick. For that moment. For that moment. Right. And just give it 120%. And just learn as much as you can because, and then never take anything for granted. Like any situation that you get in, any problem that you see, don't just close your eyes like somebody that you know that's just illiterate or something. Nah, think about it. Like, what can I, you know, like if you, because I feel like you know Africans most of the time. Like I even find myself in that situation and I, I fight it every single day. Where you know we have a mindset where we feel like somebody's gonna fix our problems. So you see something instead of thinking about what you can do about it. It's like. You this wait for somebody up. else to do it. Somebody needs to fix right. that. You complain, exactly. and that's it. And honestly, I feel like the people that are going to stop doing that and actually say, okay, this sucks. I don't want to do this. Are the people who I are going want, to transform the continent. Yeah, I want to do something. That people who want to uh, to to download Amaturufu, it's mm -hmm. available on the uh, Android yeah. platform. It's right here. Amaturufu. Yeah, it's in the App Store. Right. Everywhere. In the App Store. It's free, it's, of, it's free of charge. It's free of charge. It doesn't talk a lot of... I mean, if you got, if you got uh, Amazon, Fire, anything. Just, you know, whatever device you... Blackberry, anything. Like, I put it on there every, everywhere. So... I'm, but, I'll be playing this tonight. <laughs> Dude, I mean, you know, it's, it's challenging. Is, is it one of those games that hooks you? And, oh, man. And, I mean, honestly, if, if you're competitive, you, like, you're going to get so, so then, 
I don't want to be hooked onto it because I'll be frustrated at the end if there are levels that I cannot go. No, it starts off beginner. Mm -hmm. Like beginner level, I think any learner can start there and you know there's that gratitude there where it shows you like your best streak like how many games have you won in a row and it shows you your current streak so you know like i had this competition going on around the world where it's like i will give you a t-shirt if you can win five games in a row in advance exactly what it is hmm. like the way that you know the cards are stacked it's just i mean to me it's beautiful so, interesting yeah. and so is there is there a voice at all in there at nope. all Anywhere. Nope. So you can sit so, in your cubicle okay. and play it. Yeah, so the crazy thing is, <laughs> doing it, I didn't put that stuff in it because I didn't know how to put that stuff mm -hmm. in it. So it's the simplest thing you most can get. Most basic. Yeah, most basic. And then when I did it, it was due. Like, I don't I don't know how to do this stuff. And I just put it there like that. Come to find out people love the fact that it's just basic and uh. simple. The right I guess there's no for, for, for <laughs> you know, I mean, things. You know, because like it's not complicated. You don't gotta choose nothing. You don't gotta choose a specific sound. Right. And, you know, and that's something that people start talking about. You know, like oh, I want, I wish, you know, like I had a card that was like the flag of one. Or, like you want to pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because you know that's that's time that I'm putting into right, that. Absolutely, that, you know, absolutely. I mean, and that's maybe other ways you can monetize. Yeah, I mean, definitely, definitely. Okay. I mean, there's so many ways. Nelly Sugo, man, it's such a pleasure to uh have had you in the studio today and you know yeah, it's uh, amaturu is available again on the android and um app store uh, app stores amazon store, uh, amazon store. store. Mary, right everywhere. free of charge check it out it will change your life uh <laughs> don't play it at work or at school <laughs> um but uh you know i i, I want to give you props man i, I really do my respect to you for for you know doing this and uh you know thinking about it and actually putting it on paper and uh, that's, I guess that's the difference between people who actually concept, you know, have ideas and those that actually put ideas into work. 